first uh, American appearance in public. She's done a lot of uh, uh, radio, and you'll find her all over YouTube. She did do a, a tour of Japan last fall when she, her book first came out, and it was highly successful. The Japanese are, are into this kind of thing. But at any rate, without further ado, here's Susan. Thank you. And, and let me know if you guys need me to talk up. Um, as we all know, we're coming on the 10 year anniversary of 9-11. And 9-11 changed everything for us. It changed the military establishment. It put them in control of our government. It uh, changed the civil rights of this country. Uh, I myself was arrested on the Patriot Act and held under indictment for five years with no trial, facing secret charges, secret evidence, secret grand jury testimony. Uh, I was locked in prison on a military base with no hearing, no right to a hearing. The judge in my case was Michael Mukasey, who uh, was then promoted to be United States Attorney General, replacing Alberto Gonzalez. And, uh, and there was a reason why they did all of this. And that is that the story that I have to tell you tonight is one that you will never read in the New York Times. You will never see it in the Los Angeles Times. I've been told the Seattle Post Intelligence and the Seattle Times are terrific newspapers, and I hope someday you'll hear about it there. But the corporate media on CNN will not show you this stuff. Uh, MSNBC, the Fox News Channel, sure won't tell you this story. Uh, and so I, I hope that I hope that I want to thank you all for inviting me tonight. Um, and and it, it, it starts actually, you know, it. it it starts a year before 9-11. this lady is so convincing. When, uh, so she's just pure. I, I, pure. Had, I, I guess I have to start by saying that who I, who I am. My name is Susan Lindauer, Ooh. and I was a like U.S. Ooh. intelligence she's asset got, covering Ooh. the Iraqi embassy and the Libyan embassy at the United Nations. This was not a covert act, and this is very important. Uh, it was a... Uh, the, from the very first meetings of these embassies, I had been asked by the United States, if, because of my deep opposition to sanctions, which is very deep. Uh, Bert Sachs is here, and he, we had dinner tonight, and I, I, I think he re would tell you that I'm pretty passionate about this stuff. Uh, I had been asked if I would be a back channel and if I would establish a point of contact so that when the, the United States government had messages to give to Iraq that they didn't want to do through the media, they would do it through the back channel, and if Iraq had something to say to the United States, it would come through the back channel. 9-11 was one of those messages, okay? Uh, and the weapons inspections, okay, so I'm going to take you back to right when George Bush was getting elected or, or was stealing the election. There had already been such deep loathing of sanctions in the international community, even though there was no real awareness of it here, that the sanctions were about to collapse on the Iraqis. And so the CIA realized they had to do something fast to try to take back control of the situation. And so I was deeply anti-sanctions. I hated the sanctions. At that point, sanctions ended up killing over, over between 1.7 million and 2.1 million people by the time it was all said and done. It had destroyed the education, destroyed health care of the community, and it, it just wasn't going to go on anymore. So we began a pattern, uh, a pattern, uh, we began to negotiate a comprehensive peace framework that you have no idea even existed. And this comprehensive peace framework would have given you every single thing that you possibly could have wanted. Weapons inspections, six months before 9-11, the Iraqis invited the, you know, the FBI to send a task force into Baghdad with authorization to conduct terrorism investigations and to make arrests of terror suspects. Uh, Iraq was offering the United States unlimited supplies of oil, preferential contracts for the reconstruction phase of, of hospitals, 
uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, transportation, factories, and it would have been a piece, a major piece of dividend for the United States economy. And in the mid, and this was ongoing from December of the, from the from the November December 2000, right when they're counting the the, the, the ballots, uh, right until uh, the following year, December 2001. And we had everything, everything you wanted, you you could have had. Well, George Bush was all aware of this. Because as it turns out, though I am, it may not sound like it, but I'm actually a very big Democrat. And I'm a very big peace activist. I, and even though I was doing this weird intelligence thing as an asset, I was always very committed to my values and I was always committed to getting rid of these sanctions. Uh, and so my cousin, though, was a very big Republican. He was the chief of staff to George Bush. And so I was making sure, this is very important, because this stuff was not just disappearing into the ether of the intelligence community. It was going straight to the chief of staff of the White House. And they knew all about this peace framework in all the detail that, and, and in, in real time. Uh, so they, they, they were hearing about it as we had breaking events, which was fairly constant. There were 11 reports in all. And... They knew that it had been spelled out to the White House pretty aggressively that the uh, the international loathing of sanctions so, was going to uh, stop any Jesus action proven. against Iraq. Yeah. And so a funny thing happened in April, and this is where 9/11 in Iraq. You, you really had to understand that because in April of 2001, I received an urgent communication from my CIA handler that he had a message that he needed to transmit to the Iraqi embassy, which is why I needed to explain to you that I was an asset and what a back channel is. Uh, and is the message account, was that we were expecting uh, a major, con we had evidence, there was evidence of a major conspiracy involving airplane hijackings with the target of the World Trade Center. And he had a message that he wanted to communicate to the Iraqi diplomats, which was that in, if this attack occurred, and it was discovered that Iraq had any information about it at all and failed to give it to us, then the United States was going to go to war with Iraq. Now this was in April of 2001. And and, and in April, well, I did, we, were the, we were doing this. We were doing, the, our peace framework was going so well. So I went to the, the Iraqi diplomats and I said very quietly, I said, look, you know, if you hear anything about this conspiracy, let us know. And you just, you know, pass the information to Baghdad and, you know, let's keep going. And they're like, Iraq's response in April of 2001 was, hey, we've already offered to allow the FBI to come into Baghdad to do terrorism investigations. If you want to send the FBI in right now to find this information, to find information on this conspiracy that you say is out there, you just send the FBI right now. You go ahead. Sure. We'll help you. We don't have anything to give you. We don't know anything about it. But if you want to send the FBI in, you can find it yourself. So I went, I went back to my CIA handler, and he said, so what did the Iraqis say? And I said, oh, well, you know, everything's great. They're going to send a message to Baghdad. He said, I didn't tell you to be nice. I didn't tell you to say that. I told you to tell those, okay, now this is on, this is on tape, those MF, SOB, blankety, 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 face, blankety, blankety, heads. Uh, and he stormed up and down, screaming in his office. He said, I want you to go back and tell them we're going to go to war if this attack occurs and they don't tell us the information that we want about it. And he said, I want, and I said, Richard, you know, we're in the middle of a peace talks. We're doing really well. We've got a comprehensive peace framework on the table. We don't need to destroy the peace framework. He said, Susan, he said, you do what I tell you to do. You are a back channel. You deliver the message that I just gave you. And he said, you tell them this. The threat of war for this 9-11 scenario, and it was very precise. The conspiracy definitely involved airplane hijackings and a strike on the World Trade Center. This was not ambiguous. We knew exactly what was going to happen. 
And he said, I want you to go back and tell them that if this happens, we, we are demanding actionable intelligence to pinpoint the fine details of who's involved in it, what the flight numbers are, where the airport hubs are, those, that type of thing. And if they refuse, if they fail to do this and the attack occurs, I want you to tell them the threat comes from the highest levels of government above the director of the CIA and above the secretary of state. Quote, oh, that was the threat level. There are only three people above the Secretary okay. of State and the CIA director. The this President, is what he's telling Bush, her to go back to tell. The Vice yeah. President, Dick the Cheney, yeah. and Secretary happens, of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld. Rumsfeld. Yeah. Those are only Signed. the three men Rock above shot. the Secretary of State level. Only three men. And they had already decided in yeah, April of 2001 Bush. that when yeah, this attack China. occurred, they were going to right. war in Iraq. Yeah. And they were very well aware of this major peace framework that you didn't, you don't even know exists, well, see, that well, would have solved the entire reserved. problem. You could I have had everything you wanted. The Iraqis offered to buy one million American-made automobiles mm. every year for 10 years Russia. that would have been produced, manufactured mm. in Indiana, oh, Ohio, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michigan, yeah. and shipped yeah. over to yeah. Iraq. They were not going to license your technology and take it over there and produce it. They were well, going to buy American-manufactured American goods and Jew. services, yeah. and they were going to. It would have been a peace dividend worth billions and billions of dollars for us. And a, and a prosperity, yeah. a long-term relationship. That's why I was born on Rothschild, haven't you? Now? You yeah. didn't have to do exactly. anything. That's you would have had, you would have had everything, everything you wanted. Millions, they never pop Everything right. you wanted and, and more. Uh, and so the Bush administration had to overcome that. They had to overcome the peace option. They had to overcome the international hatred of the sanctions, which was very deep. And 9-11 fit the bill. I would like you to know that throughout the summer of 2001, June and July, we talked about 9/11 in my CIA with my C I talked in private meetings with my CIA handler, Dr. Richard Fuse, practically every single week. It was very well defined. Linda. We knew exactly Susan what Linda. was going on, but the Not focus Linda. of Ooh. our attention, Richard always my my CIA handler, Richard Fuse, example. directed my attention Ooh. always at Iraq. Make the Iraqis give it to us. They have to give it to us. And I said, but they don't have it. They don't have anything. And, and, and let, me, let me tell you something. Iraq was poised for such great success that if they could have given it to us, they would have, because they knew very well that the, what the threat was. They knew the consequence of, 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 the, of the attack on the World Trade Center. They knew it would mean war. And that had been spelled out, and they're like, Susie, we don't have anything. We just don't have anything to give you. The other thing that you don't know was that Saddam had been one of our best sources on terrorism. Whether you like Saddam Hussein's government or not, uh, whether you like Islamic fundamentalism or not, Saddam uh, was p very deeply paranoid of these people. He was afraid that, uh, that, that young jihadis would, and religious People would take advantage of the sanctions and the uh, the 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 the, the, the uh, deterioration of society and the deterioration of civil authority, and they would uh, create an try to create an Islamic rebellion, and. Uh, and so he, he tried to keep track of these people and put them down a lot. And, and you already know that. and what we've been up to and what's coming up. And uh, 
uh, then Bruce will introduce Susan and get the talk underway. And I assume, you know, you'll talk for a little while and then there'll be some oh, discussion. Oh, yeah. lots of questions. Yeah. Anything you want to ask, okay. we'll, talk, we'll stay and well, talk. All right. Um, and I'm glad you said that because I think that's a real hallmark of the 9-11 Truth Alliance. It's, uh, which of the dogs um, in this photograph here, or painting, very famous painting, hasn't got any cars. What's really special about the 9-11 Truth Alliance is that it... Um, You've got seven dogs in the background behind. This, this gentleman here, lovely man, he's just going to introduce Susan. And, and in the background is uh, seven dogs. It's a famous painting you see in every pub. When, uh, you know, these phrases come up, you know, a lot of people don't know what they mean offhand. So, it's isn't it? yeah. But once you study uh, the events of 9-11-2001, it's been almost 10 years now, one realizes that, um, you know, there are all these cliches that you can throw up, you know, we're in the matrix. The only charge you can see, it looks like a royal flush. And the dog next to him is he's dealing. He's going to give himself five cards. If he's a dealer. And do what they're told. That's, that's the game. You can get yeah, five cards. And the 9/11 truth plan is one of the few groups that refuses to stop speaking out and to stop thinking. So how many dogs is there? Is the point? And so by coming here tonight, you're part of this tradition of enlightenment and resistance and truth seeking. That's kind of been the hallmark of a lot of the higher cultures of this planet, and it's a real nine. disappointment that we seem to be entering this period in which it's nine dogs. <laughs> cherished are being stamped out with uh, the likes of Guantanamo and any and, and other torture chamber you care to name. So, anyway, if you want to talk about these things, you can come to the 9-11 Truth Alliance meetup meeting, which uh, every Saturday morning... So what do you make of all that? Well, I've seen that Susan talk about the South Hill Boulevard on the east side of the street. I don't remember the exact address. Like, she's immortal. It's um, um, the breakdown of the meeting at 11 for, I don't know, as long as people want well, to talk about it. Well, they try to take her out, give them work. And the Truth Alliance is always there. Yeah. And it's always there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
on uh, the ins and outs of 9-11. I mean, there have been all these fabulous documentaries done about 9-11, all kinds of documentaries done. I mean, there's information up in the wazoo about it, books. Stealing the land from where they are forbidden to be, i.e. Moses, Deuteronomy 32. There they are, taking over the land of Canaan and Asherah and Yahweh. As identified in the statues of El Gigante, with the little Asherah, just like him. To the chin. Too big to destroy, right? Well, yeah, they are trying to cannonball in there. Yeah, the That's why they go yeah. within yeah. 10 years. Uh, I'm really excited to yeah. hear about it. I've heard it becomes French. Change name. Others, so it's like and um, destroy the. Pyramids, which took it I mean, down in his ship's journal be about the same time <laughs> as he spotted the Great Comet on his way back from Antarctica, which has all been changed, by the way, and he was murdered by his crew. She had gone mad. So they uh, allowed the Maoris to kill him. Um, the Hawaiians thought it was God coming, but he didn't live up to their standards. Well, I have to say, I they am so him. pleased to be here. I have waited 10 years, 10 years to tell this story. Uh, I remember after 9-11 when my CIA handler, Richard Fuse, told me that uh, there really wasn't going to be much of a 9-11 investigation. And we were going to try to keep the people calm. That's what he said. We're going to keep them calm. Uh, and I said, what do you mean? <laughs> and he said, well, we don't really need them to know everything that we were doing before 9-11. And I said, well, why? <laughs> what do you think what do, what do you think's going to happen when they find out that you didn't tell them the truth? Why don't you just tell them the truth right now? And he said, well, that's not really what they want to do. So I had, uh, 